Now, for a motorcycle to become an icon, it takes a lot. It's got to have more than one thing it does right. In this case, my GS1100E does a lot of things right that I'm real happy about. Number one, it's a really comfortable bike. And number two, it requires almost no maintenance, very little maintenance. And when you do have to do something, everything's out in the open. But the biggest thing I like about it, too, is the styling. And I, it's in the eye of the beholder, but it really works for me. And by the way, if you want to watch this in 4K, just adjust your device. Now, it's always been hard for me to explain to people that have never either owned a GS1100 or ever even ridden one what the charm of the bike is. And the charm is, it's, a, it's multifaceted. To me, it's one of the most beautiful bikes ever designed. It's the most comfortable bike in my fleet if I'm going to go on a long trip. It's a perfect bike if you're going to go on a weekend trip. But there's so many other things about it to like. It's just like the jack of all trades of motorcycles. But in the end, what makes it special to me is I've owned it since it's new. I've had it 41 years. I've treated it like, like it's my stepchild, <laughs> and it is. And we're going to try to take advantage of yet another beautiful day. This summer has been full of really beautiful riding days. I have a feeling today is going to be one of them. So I'm going to start moving bikes around, get the bike pre-flighted, feed the fish, take care of the garden, and get out of here. So once I have my coffee and I'm all set to start moving things around, get my ambition up, it, every day is a little bit different. I got to move bikes around. I got to feed fish. We feed the birds. We have to do a little harvest. We still have some stuff where we can harvest in the garden, but checking the air and the tires is a must. Absolutely a must for me. And several times it has saved my bacon. In fact, twice with the MT-09, it saved my bacon. So I should be, uh, I should be very happy about that. Anyway, I want to ride a clean bike. It's just me. And use up microfibers <laughs> that's all i can say that uh colonite wax that joe gave me is really good stuff feeding the fish i always enjoy this in the morning one of the joys of living on a small farm a little baby farm or whatever but there's a downside to the farm and the downside is it's it's a few minutes every day to water things in and make sure uh, the varmint hasn't eaten your bananas or whatever that's growing that day and karen always loves to come out on a porch and we have always have one final cup of coffee before I head out on the open road, admire the garden. And Karen has done such a nice job with the uh, all the plants, all the flowers. And then we always usually pick a few flowers, fresh flowers to have for the kitchen table every day. So it's, it's not a terrible life. I shouldn't complain at all, but it is time to get out on the open road right now. Now, when I think it is Spike, to me it's an icon. The reason is, back in the day, a lot of people, a lot of my friends had these bikes. A lot of my friends still have them. And a lot of people, like myself, treasured them. They really know that they are something just a little bit better than average. And they have maintained them and taken care of them. Joe Padula, for one, has one that's got very low mileage that he did a lot of work on. And Aaron has one, and of course Dallas has one. And Andy Lee had the exact twin to this bike. So the fact that so many people had them and so many people took care of them, so many people really liked them, and in the end, so many people, in reality, they still have them. reason I call this bike an icon also another reason is almost every time I post a video about this bike what happens is and it's it's uncanny how it happens people send me comments and send me things that boy am I sorry I sold this bike when I did oh 
but I sorry I sold it. Now, of all the bikes from this era, and actually in the 80s up until maybe the mid 80s, all of these bikes share a common type of styling, but I think of all of them that, that made it to market, this one, to me, is the most stylish. Now, there was a time, and this is going back a ways, when Karen used to ride on the back and we'd go for rides. And of all the bikes I had at the time, every time she got on this bike, she liked this one the best. I'm sure because it was the most comfortable. There was a time when I had a luggage rack on the back and I had a thing so she could carry some stuff with her. And I used to keep this just basically for my touring bike for, for several years. And right up to this day, Karen still loves this bike. This is her favorite bike of all of the ones in my humble collection. Now, to be considered an icon, I think one of the, the biggest things is you've got to have a, a really good engine, a reliable, solid engine that people, people recognize that that is a well-engineered piece of equipment. And it stands the test of time. This one's got 78,000. A little over that, I've had two separate speedometers that I can do document the mileage on it. And it just seems like it, it isn't wearing out at all. It seems the same right now as the day I took it away from Westwood Suzuki. And to me, that's all part of making it an iconic bike. One of the mods I made to the bike over the years that's been really good is I've changed the gearing to 1640 with a 530 chain. And boy, is that a sweet mod if you're going to do a lot of highway riding. Great. Now, years ago, I had a very rare opportunity. I found somebody in Philadelphia that had one that they were looking to sell at a very reasonable price. And what happened is, it just happened that my friend Ray from Florida was up here at the time with his van, and we were able to get it. I was able to buy it in a Philly area and bring it home as a parts bike. And what it did, it allowed me to make Evil Twins, make a West Cooley set of bodywork, have an extra set of wheels, have a number of spare parts that I've used several of them already. And just, a, it's a comforting thing to have a spare bike in your garage when you got a bike that's 40 years old, 41 in this case, and it's going to definitely, from time to time, need some spare parts. And one of the few things about this bike that I think Suzuki really missed the boat on, but so did all the manufacturers. The anti-dive on this bike is useless to me anyway, and I've disconnected it, and that one of the few things I don't like. Over the years, I've had almost every brand of tire that you could buy in that 78,000 miles. And when I put the first set of Michelin Commanders on, I was shocked how good I had just put the front tire on, not the back, and it changed the whole handling of the bike. I'm sure modern tires do that for older bikes, but on this one, it seemed to make a huge difference. I ran right out and got the matching rear, and to this day, I've never put any other tires on there except the Michelin Commanders from that day forward. And that's a good, that's a thing when you're looking to get a bike that's 41 years old to handle as good as possible, and you can decide if it handles well. Hey, Michelin Commanders work great for me. And one of the things Suzuki really got right is the fuel tank. No, number one, it's a beautiful fuel tank, and it has a, a relatively good gauge that's, that in my case, it's one of the features I like, knowing how much gas you have. And one of the things that, that 
you don't think is going to be a big deal, but having a five plus gallon tank and a 200 mile range, you don't, in the back of your mind, you don't spend half of your time wondering where the hell is the next gas station? Now, the weather played out great today. The bike, as always, comfortable, good on gas, doesn't eat tires up like some of the sport bikes in my collection do. It's reasonably economical to own one and keep one. And in this case, it's a bike I will never sell. But it's time right now to get back to that lovable farm. like today it makes me think 1982 what was I doing how old was I I got on this bike at Westwood Suzuki went for I had to have one had to have one start selling off <laughs> a long time ago but anyway it was something that at the time I had no idea I was gonna keep it for the rest of my life I had no idea how long the rest of my life was gonna be number one maybe maybe it longer than I think it should have been. I don't know. But I know not that many things I still have from 1982. And the few things I do have are not in this good condition. So I hope you did enjoy sharing this ride with us. We're in the peak of the riding season. I hope you'll join us again. And whether you had a GS 1100 or whether you have any bike that you have passion for, thank you so much for watching and share the passion of motorcycling.